Okay, we are on the home stretch here, but one that is critically important because here we now pit chemistry versus chemistry. We have as our next erudite spokesperson, Professor Keith Nelson, also from the Department of Chemistry. His calling reaches deep into the atoms that make up matter and the ancient biblical question of group dynamics. How do large numbers of molecules move cooperatively into new positions? His model is the potato and its behavior in ferroelectric fields, <laughs> either before or after its phase transition into the latka. <laughs> His group focuses on ultrafast measurement, including seminal studies concerning ultrafast control of the potato onion molecular complex using femtosecond shaping techniques. Professor Nelson is co-founder of Active Impulse Systems, a company based on Latka Thin Films, another creative attempt to provide a large area of food, cheap, to MIT students. His latest publication, published this year in Journal of the Tribe, is entitled Viscoelastic Behavior of the Latka, the Applesauce Effect. <laughs> chosen by God <laughs> to tell you a story of good and evil, of truth revealed, and of a fight joined. A fight against the specter of world domination in favor of a vision of world peace. It's a fight we all must join. For me, the fight started when I was very young enjoying what I thought was a simple cultural inheritance. Little did I imagine that I was sampling an invitation from pure evil. <laughs> but even as a youth, I was introduced to the origins of these snacks. Potatoes and potato pancakes are prepared in cultures worldwide as a staple of calories and nutrition. The hamantashen is a legacy from those who would destroy our people. <laughs> Haman the villain of the story, who sought the fiery death of all Jews, every bite of every hamantasha that you ever eat is filled with the soul of <laughs> If we look at the composition of the hamantasha, we see an ancient fraud. It seems like an innocuous and delicious recipe, but in fact it's derived from the fraudulent oh. protocols of the elders of Haman. <laughs> yes, it is a legacy from those who would destroy us. And where did those protocols come from themselves? They were not invented out of whole cloth. They were derived from the true protocols of the elders of Vesper. <laughs> yes, Vesper, the ancient secret of symmetry and geometry. Yes, revealing truth foretelling truth long before we even had a molecular model of nature we knew to look at symmetry so let's look at symmetry <laughs> if we look at the locket it has the highest possible symmetry of any two-dimensional object it's an invitation to higher dimensionality <laughs> if we look at the homocaution it has low symmetry itself <laughs> symmetry, what about the inherent structure? Where should we look to discover the inherent structure of these objects? Well, it turns out that the truth has been lying before us all along, hidden in every latka. So I'll walk you through the steps that I was led upon myself to discover where to look for intrinsic structure. It's simple, really. Every latka contains the ingredients that show us where to look. Can you tell already where this leads? <laughs> How about now? How about now? <laughs> Surely now. Yes. Yes. We 
we look in K space <laughs> to learn about structure. There it was, foretold long before we knew of Fourier, or of X-rays, or of crystals. But armed with that knowledge, it was easy to investigate further. Here, I show the experimental setup where we submitted these samples for x-ray diffraction. And what was the diffraction pattern that resulted? <laughs> Every homentasha, this is its inherent structure. Every time you leave, this is our view. <laughs> Now, when we subject the locket to the same analysis. <laughs> but not only that, remember, the potato pancake is served in various forms worldwide in every culture. If we take those foodstuffs from different cultures and subject them to the same analysis, what is the outcome? There <laughs> Good is to be found everywhere as soon as we know where to look. So, where does it all lead? These symbols can be confusing, sometimes frightening. Where do they take us? <laughs> to the end of days. In Exorcism, that's where they take us. And we know when the end of days will happen. It's foretold in the Mayan calendar, the end of the Mayan calendar, on December 23rd, 2012. We know this. We've known it for a long time. And my personal journey started exploring this. So based on this, I was able to find truth revealed in our own hemisphere. Starting looking at the Zapotec, the pre-Hispanic language in the south of Mexico, the Zapotec English Dictionary, where we find that the Hamantash is a word in ancient Zapotec, meaning death to the innocents. <laughs> so I went to the little Zapotec village in the isthmus of Tehuantepec called the Madres. And there, I discovered <laughs> La Reina del Sur <laughs> captured, prepared for execution as a sacrifice to the god of pure evil, Hamantash. <laughs> I knew then that I was destined to perform the rescue that would strike a blow for good against this pernicious evil. But I knew too that this rescue could only be consummated through marriage. <laughs> I would be wedded forever to the fight of good against evil. I won't go into the details of the question. I'll just say that the escape itself, harrowing as it was, could only have occurred through divine intervention. So now I've joined the fight. And I implore all of you to join the fight. We must join the fight. To expunge the evil of Hamatash and seek world peace and the triumph of good. And that battle will be finished as soon as this debate is won. Thank you.